This is Specialized's brand new 2021 Stump Jumper that hopes to strike the balance between lightweight climbing prowess and descending competence with a host of updates over the outgoing model. Specialized hopes these updates will bring a telepathic magic carpet quality to the way the bike rides. Now that is quite a claim. The observant among you will have already noticed this. Specialized has removed the horse link pivot, which is the pivot just in front of the rear axle that joins the chain and seat stays together, and has replaced it with a flex stay on the bike's seat stay that drives the 130 millimeters of travel. The new model hopes to be a no compromises trail bike. So let's look at it in a little more detail. The 2021 Stump Jumper has been on a considerable diet. The size four bike that we've got here, including all hardware and rear shock, weighs 2,240 grams. Now Specialized have managed to cut that weight by doing three things. Firstly, Specialized has carefully analyzed the frame's shape, reducing material where they don't need it and reinforcing in other areas. The upshot of this is that they've managed to reduce the overall amount of material used on the bike and thus its weight. Examples of this weight saving technique can be seen on the front shock mount and the sidearm that have been carefully crafted to reduce the amount of material used in the frame's construction. Secondly, the frame's carbon layup is area specific. Now, what that means for the layman is that different types of carbon fiber have been used in different areas on the frame's construction. For example, the head tube will have different carbon fiber to the down tube. And thirdly, lab and trail testing has allowed Specialized to meticulously design the way the carbon is laid up to further reduce weight. Just like the 2021 Stump Jumper Evo that we've also done a video on, check out the description for the link to it, the new Stump Jumper is rider first engineered. That means Specialized has carefully crafted each size of the bike to have the same characteristics no matter what rider is riding it. So the smaller bike is tuned for lighter riders. The bigger bike is tuned for heavier ones, but both bikes will generate the same ride feelings. For example, a 50 kilogram rider on an S1 bike will get the same feelings as a 120 kilogram rider on an S6 size stump jumper. Unfortunately for bike testers, Specialized claims that the S1 and the S6 will feel the same are pretty hard to test unless I suddenly put on another 50 kilos, lose 50 kilos or grow six inches. So you'll just have to take Specialized word for it. Along with the fancy carbon construction, the frame also has a few nice touches. For example, there's a down tube protector there's chain slap protection on both the seat and chain stays. There are internally routed cables with internal cable guides, which makes it a really neat package. The new Stumpies also, and unsurprisingly, got SWAT storage. For those that don't know what that is, it's an internal storage cavity inside the down tube, accessed by an access port on the bottle cage. You'll also notice that the bottle cage on this model has a multi-tool attached to it. The frame has a 73mm BSA threaded bottom bracket, there's also a 30.9 seat tube diameter and it uses metric trunnion 190mm by 45mm shock spacing. Although we've got the carbon model here, the new Stump Jumper is also offered in an aluminium version. Now Specialized told us that the alloy version should have the same ride characteristics as the carbon one. Interestingly, it still also retains the horse link FSR style pivot, unlike this bike. Now let's take a slightly more in-depth look at the new Stump Jumper's suspension. Specialized is confident that removing the horse link pivot is a good thing. They say that they've managed to save 55 grams, reduce complexity by eliminating an entire bearing 
and also make the rear end stiffer because it is now one entire piece of carbon fibre. The suspension is roughly 19% progressive on the stump jumper. This progression happens in the first two thirds of the suspension's travel. That means that the suspension gets harder and stiffer the more it compresses. On the trail, this should equate to a bike that is relatively smooth off the top with good small bump compliance that gradually increases in stiffness, giving mid-stroke support and finally bottom out resistance. If the end stroke isn't firm enough for your tastes, because the bike uses an air shock, it's possible to tune the air spring to be harder at the end of its stroke with volume spaces. Specialized said it's tuned the stump jumper suspension to work specifically with high volume air shocks that have a linear spring rate for the majority of its travel and then ramp up at the end of their travel. As the shock reaches the end of its travel, this ramp up makes it harder to compress. This means the air shocks ramp up provides bottom out resistance as the bike compresses deeper into its travel because its leverage ratio flattens out, i.e. gets easier to compress towards bottom out. The two basically balance each other out. Specialized has spec'd a digressive compression tune on the stump jumper's damper. That means that there's plenty of resistance, compression resistance against pedaling forces to provide stability when you're cranking away on the pedals. This digressive tune is most noticed on smaller, slower speed hits, for example, when you're pedaling. Because the digressive compression tune doesn't significantly increase the damping after the initial amount, the bike should remain supple the deeper it goes into its travel and the harder the hits become. This should provide grip and comfort. Interestingly, Specialized has also spec'd a progressive rebound tune. Now that means that on harder, faster hits, there is more damping, while on slower hits, there is less damping. Specialized hopes that their suspension kinematic and the rear shock tune creates the recipe for the ultimate trail bike. The new Stumpy's available in six sizes. Specialized sizing is style specific, even though each of their sizes corresponds to a traditional size. For example, this means someone who is a S4, which is a large bike, could opt for an S3 or an S5, depending on how they want their stump jumper to ride. The smaller bike will be more flicky and playful, while the larger one will be more stable at speed. Specialized has managed to do this by keeping seat tube heights and standover heights low. Although the geometry on the new Stump Jumper isn't as adjustable as the Stump Jumper Evo, there is still a geometry adjust flip chip mounted on the shock yoke. The geometry flip chip changes the head angle from 65 degrees to 65.5 degrees and the seat tube angle between 76 and 76.5 degrees. It also changes the bottom bracket height by seven millimeters. Reach figures for the S1 bike start at 410 millimeters and rise to 535 millimeters for the S6. Unlike the Stump Jumper Evo, the standard Stump Jumper's chainstays aren't adjustable. However, the S1 to S4 bike has a 432 millimeter chainstay while the S5 and S6 bikes have 442 mm chainstays. There are six different stump jumper models in the range. Four of them are carbon fiber bikes that share the same FACT 11M carbon as the S-Works version, and the other two are alloy framed bikes. The most affordable stump jumper is the Stump Jumper Alloy that retails for 1,900 pounds. It's equipped with SRAM's SX 12-speed Eagle drivetrain, a RockShox 35 silver fork, and an X-Fusion rear shock and dropper post. The range-topping S-Works Stump Jumper will set you back £8,750 and is specced with SRAM's XX1 Eagle access drivetrain. It also has Fox factory suspension front and rear and specialized Roval carbon wheels with DT Swiss hubs. 
If you want to find out more about the rest of the Stump Jumper range, check out the article on Bite Radar. The link will be in the video description. So what does the Stump Jumper feel like to ride? Well, I was lucky enough to test it on my local trails in the Tweed Valley. We're not in the Tweed Valley today, we're actually in the Forest of Dean in England, but rest assured, I've given this bike a thorough workover. First impressions revealed that the Fox DPS rear shock has a robust climbing tune, which is just as well because the open modes compression tune is incredibly light. Although the suspension kinematic is more progressive than the outgoing bike, I did notice that in open mode, because of the light compression tune, pedal bob was certainly pronounced, especially when pedaling at higher cadences, either seated or standing. I did find that the middle setting provided the best compromise between suspension compliance and pedaling efficiency. And it was in this middle setting that I left the bike in for the majority of the testing period unless I was doing outright descending. The new Stump Jumper's geometry, while definitely a leap forward compared to the outgoing bike, is still only really suited to run-of-the-mill trail centre riding, bridleway bashing and general trail riding epics. It's not an extreme bike. I did feel like the seat tube angle could be slightly steeper. If you notice, I've angled the saddle downwards at the nose and pushed it forwards in the rails to help centralise my hips over the middle of the bike better. Nitpicking a seat tube angles aside, for the average trail centre rider, Specialised has tuned the stump jumper's geometry really well. That meant that climbing was generally a comfortable and effortless affair. And even after long days in the saddle, I still remained happy on the bike wanting to ride more, not experiencing a lot of fatigue. So what was it like going downhill? The geometry figures on paper should suggest that the stump jumper will come alive on the descent, thanks to its relatively slack head angle, long reach figures, and relatively generous wheelbase. But just like its climbing performance, I found the stump jumper's descending prowess was pretty middle of the road stunted for the most part by its fork. The Fox 34 chassis has proven to be pretty underwhelming on the majority of bikes that it's fitted to. However, this particular model is fitted with the Grip 2 damper, which goes some way to saving its performance. The twangy sensations of the Flexi chassis are still easy and quick to feel as soon as the terrain gets a bit chunkier or steeper. That said, traction was relatively high on the 34 and the point at which you could overwhelm its capabilities was predictable. And if you're just riding trail centre loops, I think you'll probably be fine with Fox's 34 fork. In the climbing section, I mentioned that the rear shock's compression tune is pretty light. On the descents, this translated to a bike that was quite easy to blow through its travel, despite Specialized saying that it's 19% progressive. Specialized did say that they've tuned the rear shock and the leverage ratio to be right in the middle of Fox's recommended volume spacer range. Because the bike's geometry is most at home on trail center loops and bridleway bashing, those looking to not push the envelopes of performance are gonna really enjoy riding the new stump jumper. And it would be fair to say the new Stumpy has a really balanced and intuitive ride feel. And I think that's mostly down to its geometry. Even though Specialized has done some great work on their bike sizing, I don't think they spec dropper posts with enough travel that correspond to how low and short the seat tubes are. I wasn't able to get the dropper post high enough for seated climbing or standing up descending without manually adjusting it each time. This is a real shame because longer travel dropper posts are available and they could obviously spec one to this bike. Overall though, the Stump Jumper performed really well and it's pretty obvious the 2021 model is the perfect companion for the keen mountain biker who wants to tackle trail centre loops, all day single track epics or bridleway bashing. That said, it's not quite perfect and I would personally love to see a model in the standard stump jumper range 
specced with a RockShox Pike or a Fox 36, like the outgoing Stumpy used to have. What do you think about the 2021 Stump Jumper? Have Specialized managed to strike the perfect balance between descending and climbing? Or do you think, like me, it could do with some small spec tweaks to help extend its scope? Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon to get a notification every time we upload a new video.